Hey dudes, my name's Playco, and I've been working on my spooky enemies in my VR game, and I wanted to share what I've done so far. Alright, so I have this walking enemy that has a few animations embedded in it, but it doesn't really do anything. So what does my enemy actually need to do? Well, I want it to kind of mind its own business and do its own thing until it detects a player nearby, and then it needs to be able to follow the player and attack when it gets close enough, and sort of react as needed. That sounds pretty simple, but there's kind of a lot that needs to go on there. First of all, I wanted to make my enemy be able to navigate through my level, since that's a big part of how everything will work. So I updated my Godot version to 3.5 since I wanted to use some of the new features for navigation. Essentially, you add a top level navigation node, a navigation mesh instance as a child, and all your meshes that you want the enemy to know about as a child of that. Then you can bake your nav mesh. Well, what's a nav mesh? Well, it's this blue thing. Alright, so next I hit, <laughs> just kidding. A nav mesh is basically a mesh, but it's made to fit around all your other meshes to determine how your navigation agents, which for me are my enemies, can navigate around the level. There's kind of a lot of stuff that goes into it, but the reason you'd want to use a nav mesh is to make your nav agents seem smarter. It's not limited to NPCs, you can use it for players as well. For example, if your player rides a horse, you don't really want it to run into trees, so you might use a nav mesh for your player so the horse knows how to run around all your trees. Not naming any names or anything. <clears throat> I'd recommend this guy's tutorial to get started. Alright, so I have a nav mesh, and my enemy knows how to slowly navigate to a position in my test level. Too slowly. So we're done. Ready for production. <laughs> Alright. Not really, we got a lot to do. So it can move around, which means I could just make it follow my player. And that'd work right now, so that's cool. But it looks pretty dumb, because it doesn't use any of its cool animations. So unless I want to make T-Po Simulator from the makers of Subscribe Simulator, which honestly if it doesn't exist it'd probably do really well, then I need to control the blend states for all the animations. So to do that, I set up this animation tree. Basically, it lets me define a few blend variables that when I slide this little slider there, it will blend between animations. But yeah, I can reference these variables in my code to control it all later. For this enemy, I basically need an idle, a walk, and a run animation, and I need a blend between those based on how fast the enemy is moving. But I also want to let the enemy be either crawling or standing, so I need a crawling, idle, walk, and run animation too which will be controlled by this standing variable. So those control basic movement, but I need a few other things too. I want it to scream, be able to attack, have a hurt animation, and finally a dying animation for when it's D-E-D, -D, the ed. So that gets a few control variables too. Sweet, so I have this big animation tree, but it's not really connected to my enemy because nothing's setting those blend variables. So for me, I set up a state machine in my enemy script to control what the enemy does depending on the situation. A state machine sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. All it means is that you define a few states, which you usually use in a noom, and then depending on what the current state is, it will call the function that corresponds to that state. So for example, if my enemy is in the attacking state, it calls the attacking function. Uh, yeah, so enemy code. Uh, alright, that's done, so let's move on. Okay, I'll at least give the quick TLDR. So the enemy starts off in a state. This could be the idle state, so it stays in the idle state and might go to the wander state, which lets it walk around a bit, then goes back to the idle state. If it detects a player, then it goes to the navigate state, which navigates to the player until it gets close. Once it gets close enough, it switches to its screaming state, which it only does once, then it switches to the attacking state. If the player is too far, it goes back to the navigate state, which then switches back to the attack state if it gets close. If it loses the player, then it will go back to the idle or wander, and if it gets hurt or dies, it goes into those states. <coughs> Yeah, so that's that. For getting started with controlling animation states, I definitely recommend this guy's tutorials. I also added some sound effects, depending on the state my enemy is in, and if he gets attacked and whatnot, to up the spoopy level. 
I kind of figured a spooky game isn't really a spooky game if when you slash an enemy, it doesn't spit out copious amounts of enemy juice. So I added that too. I'll probably make a video in the future about how to do that since it'd also be useful as water decorations if it was blue instead of red. Visually, I know my enemy still needs some work, but I think it's mostly there. So let's throw all that together and test it out. Anyway dudes, that's all I got so far. See ya!